Hi, I'm Dr. J, and this is a video about random variables. As usual, there's going to be a link down below in the description to the PDF version of these slides, as well as to the other slides that are in this series, or the other videos that are in this series. Unlike the previous video where I uploaded a whole hour-long video, I'm going to break this one down into more segments or parts, uh, and those links will be down below. All right, so the main purpose of this particular video is just to distinguish, well, introduce random variables and to distinguish between discrete random variables and continuous random variables before we start going into more depth on discrete random variables. All right, so the previous video, uh, which was all about probability and talked about sets or events and talked about probabilities of those events and ways to combine them and so forth, that's not the way that statisticians and the probabilists tend to work with randomness. Instead, they work with something called random variables. So that's what we're introducing here. So a random variable is just a function of an experiment. So formally, if we have an experiment, we have some output uh, omega in a sample space capital omega, and x, a random variable, just takes whatever outcome we observed, that's the little omega, and converts it into a real number. Okay, so all that fancy notation that's in the slide, that's all it's saying. We just take an experiment and we turn it into a real number. Okay, and that number we call a random variable. And it's random because we don't know the outcome of the experiment before it occurs, and therefore what number we will see is also random. Okay, so just to give you a couple of examples of rolling six-sided dice and the random variables that we could construct based on rolling these two six-sided dice. So the first one is we could just roll the dice, and then we could take the sum on the upturned faces. So in this case, we have, what, a sum of six, right? If we had rolled it differently, whoa, then we actually did roll them. Uh, we might see 9, for instance. Okay, so that might be one random variable. Uh, another one might be that we roll the 2, we take the sum, and we say, look, is the sum greater than 5? Right? This is now binary, right? Either yes it is, or no it's not. Uh, and we usually would encode that as a 1 if it's yes, and a 0 if it's not. Alright, so throughout my discussion of random variables here, I'm going to be using capital letters, uh, capital Roman letters, to indicate random variables, and usually these will be letters at the end of the alphabet, like x, y, z. And if we want to distinguish between the random variable and the observed quantity of that random variable, the observed quantity will be a lowercase Roman letter, like lowercase x, y, z. Right? This is in contrast to when we were talking about events, where the convention that I used was to use capital letters at the beginning of the alphabet for those events. Okay. So uh, let's just get into an example of an experiment and some other random variables that we might have. So let's say that we have this uh, communication network uh, or channel, and we're going to send eight bits down that channel. And the only thing we care about is whether or not, or really how many of those bits were incorrectly received. So I'm going to send those eight bits, and then the other person at the other end of the line is going to tell me, yes, that one was right, that one was not right, and so forth. Okay. So x here is a random variable, and it is the number of incorrect bits that were received. The possible values for x are the integers from 0 to 8, because I could have sent all 8 and had uh, no problems, I could have sent all 8 and had all problems, or anywhere in between. Uh, to relate what we're doing in random variables here back to events, we uh, might want to be thinking about, okay, what events occur, uh, or can occur, within this random variable construction? So one example is that, say, no incorrect bits were received. Right? If no incorrect bits are received, then that just means that x, which is the number of incorrect bits, must be zero. So this event, no events, no incorrect bits received, right, is just the same as x equals zero. All right, the next one is at least one incorrect bit is received. Well, that event means that x must be at least 1, or x is greater than or equal to 1. So that's the event now. Uh, here, exactly two incorrect bits received. Well, that's just x is equal to 2. Uh, how about between 2 and 7, inclusive of 2 and 7, incorrect bits received? That just means this event says that x is somewhere between 2 and 7, where it could have been 2 or 7. So we can represent that in this uh, event formulation this way. So this is why statisticians and probabilists tend to work with random variables as opposed to working with events directly, generally. Okay, so now the important piece that we're going to get to today 
in this video is to talk about the distinction between a discrete random variable and a continuous random variable. And in order to get there, we're going to have to talk about the range or the image of this random variable. So remember, the range for a function is just the values that that function can possibly take on. And since a random variable is a function, then that's what the range is. All the possible values for all the possible experiments that could occur, all the possible values that we could see. The notation here, right, that's what the notation says. Little omega is in capital omega, that's all the possible experiments. So for all the little omegas that are up there, right, if we take x of that little omega and we call that little x, that's the observed value of this random variable, it's just the collection of all those possible values. Okay, so the key here is that a discrete random variable has a finite or a countably infinite range. Okay? As opposed to a continuous random variable that has an uncountably infinite range. The easiest way to think about this is that if there's ever an interval that the random variable could be, then it's immediately a continuous random variable. If there's no interval, uh, maybe I should hesitate before saying this, but if there's no interval, at least for everything we do, there will be uh, it will be a discrete random variable. Okay, so here's some examples. So we uh, say put a hard drive. You know what, I've got all kinds of hard, let me grab a hard drive. All right, so here, this is a hard drive. We put this hard drive into production uh, and we just record how long it lasts in production until it has a major failure. All right, so right there, what are the possible values for this random variable that we're calling here y? Right? It's just the time until this major failure. Well, it could fail, say, almost immediately, so anything just greater than zero, but it could run for a long, long, long time. And there's really sort of no upper limit to how long it could run, so uh, really any value between zero and infinity is a reasonable value for this failure time for this hard drive. All right? So the image or the range for y here is the interval zero up to infinity. Because it has an interval, that means this random variable has to be a continuous random variable. All right, how about this one? Uh, we go back to our communication channel example. So we're sending eight bits, and we can have possibly zero up to eight bits incorrectly received. Well, that's clearly a finite uh, set of possible, this range is finite, because there's only nine values, zero to eight, the integers. And so this is a discrete random variable. All right, um, we could also take that same kind of communication channel, but we could like, you know, send bits, I don't know, let's say as fast as we can. Uh, maybe we can send them infinitely fast, and all we care about is how many were incorrectly received in the course of 10 minutes. Well, if we, can, if we could send infinitely number uh, through that channel, then we have a possibility of having an infinite number of incorrectly received bits. For the smallest incorrect received bits we could have is zero if the communication channel was perfect, right? But we could have one, or we could have two, or we could have three, or four, or five, or six. But the key is that set or collection of numbers is countably infinite, right? If you don't remember what countably infinite means, there's going to be a link up here to another video talking about countably infinite. All right, so the range of this random variable is the integers 0, 1, 2, on up to infinity. But this is a countable set, and because it's a countable set, this is going to be a discrete random variable. All right, and the main purpose of making this distinction between discrete random variables and continuous random variables is that we will need to uh, treat those two differently when we deal with the mathematics behind them. All right, so now uh, the next video will be part two in this series. Hope to see you there.